everybody. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through some really simple steps to learn how to draw a fish. So what we're starting with is just kind of a formula of using some basic shapes, like circles, ovals, and even some kind of organic shapes that just kind of look like blobs to make the beginning of our fish or the fish's body. And then once you've gotten some ideas on how to vary the shape of your fish's body, we'll move on and look at some really, really basic shapes to be the top fin of your fish. Some of those fins will be kind of angular and sharp, and then also trying out some round curvy lines. And then using that same formula to create the fin on the side of your fish, trying out some different lines. These are super simple shapes that you can put together in different ways to make every fish you draw look a little bit different. Then once you've taken a look at how to make your fish's body and some different options for fins, we're gonna look at different ways to make fish lips using that same formula. So my first example has kind of angular lips. The second one almost looks like a sideways heart, kind of round bubbly shapes. And then the third one is what you would see if you were looking straight on at the fish instead of to the side. And they're just kind of two ovals. The top one looks a little squished down. And then the last part of the fish we're gonna talk about is some ways, some options for you to make some different kinds of cartoon eyes. So this eye starts with what looks like a stretched out M. Add a couple of half circles. And then you're gonna draw a small circle inside that black circle and color it all in except for a little white spot. That little white spot is like the reflection. It gives your, your cartoon animal a little bit of life. Next, I'm gonna do super simple, two round eyes all black except for that little reflection that you always want to keep white. And then the last option starts with just two lines with half circles drawn on the bottom. So that's the shape of your eye. Then you're going to draw the black circle inside and color everything except for that little reflection. So three super simple cartoon eyes. There are dozens of other ways you can draw eyes, but those are just some ideas. So now that you've practiced some of those different shapes and have some ideas, I'm gonna show you some really easy ways to put those shapes together to make some different looking fish. So to start with, I'm just gonna spread out some of those basic shapes that we talked about on my paper. So I'm gonna draw multiple fish on this paper. I'm just starting with some shapes. So I've got an oval, a circle. I kind of like the idea of varying the size of the fish as well. I'm gonna do some triangle fish, some little ones up there in the corner, and then kind of a blobby organic fish down in the corner. Now, after you've got those basic shapes laid out on your paper and you've kind of filled your paper up, we're gonna add some details. So choose from those features that we talked about earlier, the different kinds of eyes, the different kinds of fins, and by choosing a different combination for each fish, you're gonna end up with however many fish you draw, I have four fish on my paper, you're gonna end up with four fish that each have their own unique look and their own unique expression. So I'm starting just by filling in eyes. My little tiny fish is gonna have a little tiny eye because he's about too small to have much detail in there, but that's okay. Now we're gonna move on to adding that dorsal fin on the top of your fish, as well as the tail and the other fin on the side of your fish using combinations of those more geometric lines and then some more rounded kind of bubbly lines. So I'm just playing a little bit with every fish, trying to mix every fish up a little bit and have it look a little different. If you wanted to be more scientific, you could absolutely get a reference picture, whether you look up a picture online or you have some books around that you can take a look at and model your fish after real fish. Like the fish that I'm drawing here reminds me of a beta fish. But whether you want your fish to look more cartoony or more realistic, 
Learning how to mix those different kinds of lines and shapes up will give your drawing a lot of variety. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some lips and other details and you can do the same. So the fish that I can see from straight on, from the frontal view, I'm adding the full lips that kind of look a little bit more like people lips. And then before I add any kind of pattern to my fish, I like to draw kind of a line towards the front third of the fish that kind of divides the fish's face from the fish's body. And it's a little bit different if you wanna do it on the, the frontal fish there. I just drew some lines to kind of add places for different colors. He looks a little bit like a basketball, don't you think? And then his dorsal fin, that top fin, you're just gonna see from straight on and the same with his side fins. And those are the bubbly kind of um, cloudy looking or like a flower almost lines that we practiced at the very beginning. But they all four have a very different look. Once you have your basic shapes down, go ahead and start adding in some fun patterns. They can be realistic if you wanna go more towards scales or some patterns you might see in real fish, or they can be completely imaginative, just made up. You can have polka dotted, striped, whatever kind of fish you like and make you happy. But go ahead and add some details to those fish now. And then since fish are often seen in schools, I went ahead and just filled some space with lots of that little fish. He's really simple, really easy to draw over and over. So take a look at your paper and see where your composition might have some big open spots and maybe even repeat a fish or two. So you've learned to draw some different fish. If you wanna be done with your drawing, you could absolutely be done, but I think nothing looks more complete than having some things in the background behind your fish. So here are a few really easy ways to draw underwater plants. The first one starts with just a simple V and then some bubbly shapes around that V that make the leaf. So if you notice here, we're using the same combinations of, of rounded curved lines and straight lines together. So this plant just is a little bubble. It kind of looks like the fin that we used for the dorsal fin. And then inside, some really simple straight lines just to kind of give the suggestion of a kind of a tree or a plant kind of growing within that form. Super, super simple. This is just a super easy little leafy plant that might grow at the bottom of the ocean. And then this one is a bit more geometric. This is coral growing and it just branches off like you would draw a tree, a couple of big branches with lots of little branches coming off of those. I like to think of these as drawing Ys. Every line just has a little Y drawn right off of it. So there are many ways that you could draw ocean plants, but these are just a few really simple suggestions that you could add in to the space around your plants or around your fish, excuse me. And then down at the bottom to kind of ground those plants, I'm just adding some little rocks or you could even just add some lines to indicate dirt or sand at the bottom of the ocean. It just helps them look like they're grounded and attached at the bottom of the ocean. And then that is kind of my horizon line. It's the line where the ground stops and the water is up above. So after you've played around with those plant shapes a little bit, or just gotten some ideas, go ahead and grab your original fish drawing and just take a look at where you have the most room, some places you could put some big plants. They can even go right off the edge of your paper. They can go behind your fish. So the plants are in the background. The fish are closer to you. So they're in the foreground in front of the plants. So go ahead and just let it look like it goes right behind it and accommodate your drawing, just stop right when you get to the fish or to whatever object is in the front. This will help add a nice sense of depth to your drawing, that some things are closer to you and some things are further away. And then you can just work your way around the page, adding whatever plants you think fit the best within your composition and trying to get a little bit of variety in the types of lines that you use, whether you're using big bouncy curvy lines or kind of straight geometric lines. I even like at this step to go ahead and thicken some of my lines up so that there's some variety as well between thick and thin lines. 
And this is also a good time to give yourself a line, a horizon line that's behind your plants. So this, instead of being like a horizon line, is generally where the ground meets the sky. Because we're dealing with underwater, it's where the ground meets the ocean or the water. So that line will go all the way behind any objects. It's the furthest thing away. Now look at your drawing as a whole composition and see if you have any empty areas. I'm looking around for spots that look like they could use a little interest and make sense for some bubbles, some air bubbles to be coming from my fish. Just a fun, playful little detail. And I love that it's repeated over and over that same circular shape. I think repeating the same thing over and over really can pull your whole composition together. So if you have room for that, you can do it now. If not, no big deal. So if you made it this far into the video with me, your fish drawing, your entire composition is done. You can feel free to add color to it in whatever way you want. I use some simple Crayola washable markers that come in lots of colors just to kind of fill my scene up. You could use watercolor paints or crayons, colored pencils, anything you have handy. So good job. I can't wait to see what you make. If you want to send me a picture, I love to 